uh, we are sitting in the presence of God to listen the word of God from the servant of God from Tennessee. And uh, uh, I would like to invite and I would like to welcome uh, Pastor Sam Kuti, Sam Kuti Vargis uh, with us this morning. Uh, he is uh, one of my close friends and uh, uh, actually he is the pastor, senior pastor of China Church of God, Chattanooga, Tennessee. You know, uh, he is uh, uh, actually we, we, we studied together. Uh, we did our theological studies together uh, in Haryana Bible College uh, uh, almost uh, 20 or 21 years ago. I mean, you know, after that, uh, after the graduation, there was no connection with him. And uh, uh, but by the grace of God, uh, uh, when we moved uh, to Tennessee from India, uh, we came to know that uh, uh, dear Pastor Sankuti is uh, also uh, ministering and staying nearby my sister's house and uh, in that area. So uh, I just remember that uh, the old memories and all, and I thank God for the servant of God uh, that uh, uh, who used, I mean, sent us in our midst uh, this morning to, to preach to us, to, to give the word of God. I mean, so let us all uh, uh, thank God for everything and uh, let us all, I mean, uh, uh, I mean uh, sit in the presence of God with a prayerful attitude so that uh, God may speak to us through the servant of God and uh, uh, let us all put our hands together and welcome uh, Pastor Sam Kuti Varghese in our midst. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Ho hope you all can hear me. Yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord, I want to greet you all in the sweet name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is such an honor to be with you, uh, though not much in a person there with you in the church in uh, Sacramento, but I uh, joined uh, you from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, uh, such a great joy to see um, each of you as you have signed in through the Zoom video conferencing system. Thanking God for all the technology that we have these days, uh, which is very much uh, helping us to come together um, from many parts of the world uh, to worship the Lord. I want to thank God for this privilege uh, that God has given me to uh, be with you and uh, share from God's word. I thank God for uh, your pastor and uh, my beloved friend, Pastor Sam Guti, uh, Matthew and his family. Uh, God has given us the privilege to learn God's word together in the years of 94 through 96. And um, then uh, we had no uh, idea of where he was and he, as he just said, he didn't have any idea about where I was. But um, uh, luckily we got to uh, see each other here in the uh, uh, US a couple of months back, uh, almost after 20, 24 years of uh, gap. But uh, the Lord was faithful uh, in keeping us in uh, wherever we've been and helped us to continue in the ministry of the Lord. And I had the time um, of spending a few hours with him while uh, uh, he and his family they were here uh, in Tennessee before uh, they moved to uh, US City. So um, I appreciate uh, Pastor Sam and uh, his family and the whole church for um, uh, letting me uh, be part of uh, the worship that you are having and giving me the privilege to uh, preach from uh, God's word. I'm pastoring here at Church of Tyner Church of God it's um, um, also connected with um, the Church of God with the head office here in Cleveland, Tennessee. And uh, I very recently learned that you are also part of Church of God and uh, you are uh, administrative bishop. Uh, uh, bishop Sean O'Neill uh, is a good friend of mine. Uh, we work together at several um, um, uh, projects here in the uh, World Missions Office. And it's such a great joy to be with you and uh, uh, seeing you all, all the young ones and all the children and all the, uh, all the adults and everyone. And especially I enjoyed the time of all the children uh, sharing their uh, memory words. And uh, also I want to thank God for um, uh, the dear brother who uh, just shared from God's word and uh, he gave us uh, enough thought for uh, this day. Let's continue to trust in him uh, in this changing world. Uh, that's what actually one of the uh, points that he emphasized 
uh, we are living in a very changing world. Uh, it is changing every now and then, every day it is getting changed. Uh, drastic big changes are taking place everywhere. And uh, even in the country that we live, uh, a lot of changes that are happening in related to the uh, politics and uh, in relation to, to the health, in relation to, uh, especially with this virus, that it has brought a lot of change. Uh, that is in terms of uh, uh, the mode of our worship, the method of our worship, and everything is getting changed. So there is, uh, uh, without any doubt, that we all can say that we are living in a changing world. Though we are living in a changing world, we have a God who never changes. We have a God who never changes. And though the situations may change, all the political scenarios may change, all the, all the health concerns may change and everything will change, but we have a God who will never change. And he has promised us that he will be with us uh, in every uh, situation that we have to go through. So this um, um, your morning, my afternoon, I have already completed a service here and I gave the message uh, to our church here. And this is the second one that I am giving today. And uh, uh, so now uh, the message that the Lord has given me um, uh, for you or for us together at this time is um, taken from the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter 13, um, um, verses 5 and 6, verses 5 and uh, 6, from the book of Hebrews, chapter um, 13, verses 5 and uh, 6. Let me read them for you, uh, verses 5 and 6. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with the such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man can do unto me. May the Lord um, uh, add his blessings as we have just um, um, read and heard this um, particular verse. The message that I wanted to share with you today, I have entitled, I said, I will never leave you. I will never leave you. Let me start with a question. Have you ever felt missing something? That may sound a very simple and a silly question. I think there are many times we felt that we are missing something. We are missing something. Every time we feel that we are missing something. As we worship the Lord together this morning, probably you can ask yourself or we can ask ourselves, are we really missing something? But the next question is, have you ever missed God? Have you ever missed God? Have you ever felt that God has missed you? Have you ever felt that God has ever missed you or whether you have missed God? I was doing a course um, on chaplaincy a couple of weeks back. And uh, we know that we, we always get some um, unnecessary calls or unwanted calls from the marketing people, from the marketing agencies. While I was in the hospital, one of the calls that I received and I thought it is um, uh, probably a call of some emergency. I just attended the call and uh, the voice in the other, other side uh, a lady asked me, it's just a call reminding about the doctor's appointment, the follow-up appointment tomorrow. In fact, I never had any doctor's appointment or I never uh, uh, scheduled for any follow-up appointment with the doctor. Then I asked her, are you really uh, calling me for a follow-up appointment? And then she said, yes, sir, we are calling you to remind you about the follow-up appointment after your surgery. Soon the thought that came to me, did I miss any surgery? So that's the type of world that we are living. So we get every time confused. And uh, 
uh, we do not know exactly what is happening. Things are so confused. And we always feel that we miss something. I remember the story about, uh, about a woman in a city. She had two boys, two very naughty boys, two very naughty boys. And they used to jump up and down every time and they used to give a very headache to their mom. She had no idea of how to control these boys. And they used to shout at their highest voice and they used to do all kinds of naughty things. I know that many small boys are listening to me. I don't know how naughty you are to your parents. But now we know that boys are usually a little bit of naughty. And uh, this lady, this woman, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, she had two very naughty boys. She tried everything to control their naughtiness, but uh, ultimately she failed. And then she heard about a pastor, a preacher in the town who is very good in making the children so controlled. So she called that pastor and asked the pastor, Pastor, I have two boys and they are very naughty. And I have tried every trick and every magic and everything that I know to control them. But I failed and I heard that you are good at making these naughty boys controlled. Can I get an appointment to bring my boys to you? And the pastor said, yes, you can bring them to me and uh, you can get the appointment for uh, one child at a time. And then the woman called uh, his office and got the appointment for the uh, older boy, the first, the eldest one. So the eldest one got the appointment and he went to the pastor's office. As soon as the pastor saw this naughty boy coming into his office, uh, the pastor welcomed this boy and gave him some juice to drink and uh, made him comfortably sit in the office. And within a minute or two, pastor realized that this boy is so naughty, he started touching and removing the, all the stuff that was placed on the uh, pastor's table there. And he's replacing it uh, from one place to other. And he started doing all the naughty things. And when the pastor observed all his naughtiness and he's not able to sit quiet even for a minute, pastor with a furious face asked him, where is God? And that boy did not understand anything. Why the pastor is asking me, where is God? He did not have any answer to tell back that pastor. That pastor, again, he raised his voice for the second time and he asked, where is God? And the boy got a little scared and he still did not know any answer to give that pastor. For the third time, the pastor, he raised his voice to the maximum sound, to the maximum voice, and he shouted and asked that boy, where is God? When the third time it came with a very loud voice, the boy could not control himself to sit in that very office. He ran to the door, opened the door soon, and he ran all the way in the streets, all the way he reached his house. As soon he reached his house, his younger brother was waiting there in the front yard and the younger one did not understand anything. What was happening with this older one? Or the older one, he ran into the house and went into his room and uh, entered into his closet, closed the door and he started uh, uh, feeling the fear. And the younger one, he, he ran after this, uh, uh, the older guy and he went and asked him, Brother, what happened? You tell me what happened. How did the appointment go? And uh, the older one said, my young brother, I think we are in big trouble now. We are in big trouble. The younger one asked, tell me what happened? Do you know something? God is missing. And that pastor says that we did it. So that's how we feel every time that we are missing something. Uh, we are living in a changing world and we feel every time that something or other that we are missing. If you go to the Bible, there are plenty of occasions and there are plenty of examples that we can read from the Bible itself. There are many felt that they are forsaken by God. 
many servants of god many people of god in the bible they have felt that they are missing something or they have missed god but let me tell you my friend this morning if we are feeling that we are missing god if we are feeling that we are uh, missed by god let me encourage you this morning we are living in this changing world in this changing situation but the encouraging words that we have run from the book of hebrews it says that i will never leave you and i will never forsake you what a great god we have what a loving god that we have he has promised us that he will never leave us and he will never leave us if we go to the bible we can read about a great um, servant of god his name was joshua and there came him a point where he felt that he is really missing the hand of god if we go to the book of deuteronomy you don't have to turn there we don't have to turn there we are going not going to read much words from there but if you go to the book of deuteronomy chapter 31 uh twice it says in the first eight verses in uh, verse 6 and also in verse 8 Uh, in both places here uh, uh, joshua felt that he is missing the help of god and then there he says that be strong and be of good courage he will not leave you nor forsake you in verse 6 and also in the verse 8 um, uh, it's again it says that he will not leave you nor forsake you so joshua he felt that he is missing god or probably god missed him in the situation that he was facing through and then uh, god's promise came that i will never leave you and i will never forsake you if we go and ask uh, with uh, david in psalm number 13 there he says that lord how long will you hide your face from me how long will you hide your face from me because david felt that god is hiding his face from david and felt like that he is missed of god if we go and ask uh, uh, to the great servant job in the book of job chapter 23 there he is uh, saying a sentence if i knew where to go and find him i will go and find my god that means job felt in his life that he is missing god or he is missed by god or forsaken by god i mean even we we can read about um, uh, about the life of jesus while he was on the cross of calvary he is asking the same question to his father saying that my god my god why have you forsaken me so there are ample of evidences there are ample of a uh, 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 scene that we can see here in the bible itself where it says that uh, people have experienced uh, missing god people have experienced uh, being forgotten by god this morning as the situations are changing in this very nation as the situations are changing in this whole world due to the pandemic due to the covid 19 i mean due to the political scenario all the situations are getting changed but in this very changing world let me encourage you uh, let me urge you my friend God has given us that great promise that he will never leave us he will never leave us what a great promise what a great uh, comforting words uh, that we have read in the book of hebrews there it says that i will never leave you and i will never forsake you the first thing that i wanted to um share with you is god will never leave us in the midst of changing circumstances as i was just mentioning in the in the beginning i repeated that sentence i think god knows all the situation that we are going through none of this situation has come to us without the permission of god the terrible disease or the virus that we are facing these days and that we are afraid of i strongly believe that it has come to this earth with the very permissive will of god god has sent this virus to this world i mean for an intention he has a purpose until and unless he is accomplished with that very purpose it will not be going away therefore this morning my friends we need to realize that very fact though the circumstances are getting changed though the situation is getting changed we have a god 
who said he will never leave us nor forsake us even in the changing circumstances. So things will change. Things will not be same as we think. Things are not same as we used to have a, probably a year ago. Things are getting changed. And um, uh, uh, in the portion that we have read in the book of Deuteronomy, there uh, we read that the leadership is getting changed. A leadership is getting changed. And when Joshua was not much um, uh, uh, thinking about how to lead the people, uh, there comes the promise of God and telling him that be of good courage, be courageous, be of uh, good cheer, be, be of good courage. And uh, he said he will uh, lead him or he will uh, be with him. Uh, uh, we know that uh, many kings came to fight with him. And uh, uh, though we see that all those things happen in the very beginning, towards the end, we see that in every distress that he was going through, in every war that or the battle that he was facing through, in every struggle that he was facing through, in every difficult time that he was facing through, at the end of that very day, he was able to see the hand of the Lord defeating all his enemies. Let me tell you, my friends, in the same way that we can experience our God. Though we are experiencing difficult time, though we are going through the uh, toughest time in the history, though we are facing through the uh, difficult situation in our lifetime, I think none of us have gone through or experienced such a difficult time in our lifetime uh, uh, so far. Now we are in a place, we are in a time where things are out of control. You and I, we are not able to decide on what exactly will happen in the next hours. We are not sure how exactly the things are going to take place in the next day or probably in the next week time. But when everything is under a chaos, when everything is under a big confusion, when everything is going out of control, when things are not in our control, when we are not able to realize and comprehend and understand what things are going on, what is going wrong in this world. Let me tell you, my friends, God says as a promise that he will never leave us in the midst of changing situations. If you are going through a changing situation, if you are going through a tough situation in your life, if you are going through a difficult time in your life, amen, as you are listening, as you are worshiping the Lord this morning, let me prophesy and let me tell you, my friend, as you are going through the toughest time of your life, let me tell you by encouraging, God's word says that he will never leave you. I'm not very sure. About it. I, I think I am seeing all of you except your pastor for the first time. I do not know what the situation that you are going through. I mean, as many of you are listening to me, I mean, you only know probably the pain that you are going through. You only know the struggles that you are facing through. You only know the family, I mean, issues that you are facing through. You only may probably know the struggles of your young ones. You only may know the struggles and the care that you need to give for your children. You only know probably the sickness that is attacking your family. You only know the financial, I mean, attacks that are coming to your family. But let me tell you, no matter what the situation that you go through, and we have that great promise of God saying that, I will never leave you. God's word says, I will never leave you. The thing is, no matter what the situation, he is holding on to our hand. God is holding on to your hand, my friend. As you are worshiping the Lord this morning, let me tell you that if you are going through the toughest time, if you are not able to see, I mean, how things are happening around, but let me encourage you by saying that God is holding on to your right hand. God is holding on to your right hand. Oh, I know that the spirit of the Lord is speaking to somebody this morning and telling you, my brother, God is holding on to your right hand. You may not see, I mean, where God is. You may not see how the help is coming. You may not see from where the help is coming. But let me encourage you that God is watching over you. And God is seeing over you. And he is holding on to your right hand. 
he will hold on to your hand and he will lead you. I have read somewhere like this. A family was very peacefully living in a, in a village. And immediately something very devastating happened to that very family. Their house completely got on fire. All the family members, they have collected all their belongings, whatever they could collect in their hands. And they ran out of the house. They all went outside. In that house, there was a small girl. She also grabbed whatever she could in her hand and she ran outside. Then she realized there was a toy, a teddy bear, which she loved very much. Every night when she, she uh, sleeps, she sleeps with that teddy bear. And she could not imagine or could not think about how to miss that teddy bear. She left everything that she grabbed in her hand on the floor outside. And in that burning house, uh, in that house that was on fire, she ran into her bedroom and her bedroom was upstairs. She ran into the upstairs through the stairs and grabbed that teddy bear that she was loving so much. When she grabbed the, the teddy bear, she tried to come out, come down the staircase by the time all the stairs got into fire and she was not able to come. Uh, her parents started looking for that girl and they heard a, a crying voice from the top floor, uh, uh, from the second floor in the house saying that, Daddy, come and save me. So then only they realized that their daughter went back into the house to grab something else. And now she is stuck in that uh, burning house. Amen. You know what happened? That father of that uh, little girl, he went to the window side of that bedroom and he shouted to that small girl and said, my daughter, you cannot come through the stairs now because all the lower floor and all the stairs are on fire now. If you go through there, you will be burned alive there. So don't go through there. You just open a window and then you just jump through the window and I will catch you from the ground. That small girl, she looked around, she opened the window and she looked for her dad and she was not able to see her dad. Then the small girl shouted back and said, Dad, where are you standing? If I jump, I do not know where I'll be falling. And then that father said, Daughter, you don't worry. Wherever you see the opening, you just jump. As you jump, I will see you and I will catch you with my hand before you dash on the floor. That's the kind of care that God is giving you and me, my brother. Amen. Let me tell you, my sisters. Let me tell you, my young friends. Let me tell you, my brothers. Let me tell you, my friend. Amen. Hallelujah. You may not be able to see where God is standing in the midst of the changing situation that you are facing through. But even if you don't see God, where he is standing. Have a great trust in him as the dear brother has preached to us. Have a great trust in him and jump and he knows how to catch you before your foot dash on the floor. Before you fall to the ground, you are loving father, you are loving God. He will catch you. He will snatch you away before or without you dashing against the stone or against the floor. It's the same way God is saying that God will never leave you in the midst of changing situations. So let me, let me go very fast. And uh, the next point that I wanted to tell you is God will never leave you when you are challenged by the needs of this world. God will never leave you when you are challenged by the needs of this world. You know, you can, you can probably turn to the same Bible verse that we have read at the beginning as the main verse, Hebrews chapter 13. And there it says, verse 5, Let your conduct be without the covetousness. Be content with what you have. Be content with what you have. The Bible there says, He's talking about the contentment. The needs of this world, 
the needs that you and I have, we cannot put a full stop or we cannot put a limitation to it. The human needs are unlimited. That's what the, the theory says. So here it says that be content with what you have. Be content with what you have. Now we all have different needs. We have different needs and wants and we are working day and night. We are doing probably an extra duty. We are doing maybe an overtime work. We are trying to do probably a second job and everything we do in order to meet our needs because our needs are uh, numberless. Our needs are countless and we have several needs and we do not know how to meet all those needs. Uh, but the Lord is saying that though you have different needs in this world, uh, I am not going to leave you. I mean, so God says that God will never leave you when challenged by the needs of this world. Let me tell you, my friends, think of what you have. Never try to think about what you don't have. Think about what you have. Never try to think about what you don't have. Try to be content with what you have. Never try to compare yourself with someone else. We are living in a competing world. We are living in a world with the full of needs. We need everything. We need everything. But we probably may not have everything. But the Bible says, be content with what we have. Try to be satisfied with what we have. Never try to compare with what others having. Paul the apostle is saying to the church at Philippi, and chapter four and verse six, he says, do not be anxious for anything, but in everything by prayer and petition and supplication, give thanks unto God. My friends, let me tell you a truth. You are of great worth. You are of great worth. You are of great worth. You got enough what you need. You got enough what we got enough what we need. We need to learn with what we have. What happens uh, uh, at times, we never try to understand what we have. We never try to or we fail in realizing what exactly what we have. We, we, we fail in realizing who exactly we are. We are trying to compete with others and we are trying to uh, compare ourselves with others. And then at the end, we feel so disappointed and so disgraced saying that I don't have that and I don't have this. God has given you and me what we really need. God has given you and me what we really need. We need to take time, sit down quietly, and try to realize and understand what you and I have. When we try to understand what you and I have, there are many in the world that don't have even a small portion of what you have or what I have. God has blessed us. God has blessed us beyond of what we can imagine or what we can think. But still there are times that we think or we feel that we are missing something. But let me tell you, God said he will be with us and he will never leave us when we are challenged by the things of this world. But let me tell you at the same time, try to realize what you are. Try to realize what you have. Try to realize who you are and try to realize the value of our own life. Let's try to understand what exactly uh, we have. Sometimes we fail in understanding what we are unless and until someone else reminds us what we are. Let me repeat that sentence. We fail to understand what we are or who we are until and unless someone from outside or someone else reminds us what we are. Probably you must have heard about a story that a house owner wanted to sell his house. A house owner wanted to sell his house. So he asked the realtor to come and make a description before he placed the advertisement at realtor.com. So the realtor came 
and he walked around the house, around the property, walked into all the room, and he asked all the details to the house owner, and he made a description. And he read all the description to the landlord. When the landlord heard all the descriptions, um, uh, uh, he said, I think my house is little more uh, worth than what you have described. He wanted to sell this house and buy another house with uh, uh, different thoughts or the needs that he had. Then the realtor went back. The other day he came and he made, added a few more things in the description and he read that description to the landlord and said, this is a new description I have now for your house before I place the ad. The, the landlord was not very happy with the second uh, uh, day's uh, uh, description as well. And then he asked um, uh, the realtor, you go and make one more description and come back and probably I'll be okay with that and then we can place the ad. He came uh, the, the other day and the next day he came and he read uh, the beautiful description that he created about this house. When the landlord heard about the beautiful description about his own house, the landlord told the realtor, thank you so much for giving me such a beautiful description about my own house. That's the type of house that I am planning to buy. Until and unless the realtor came and gave the description about his own house, he failed in understanding what exactly he has. When a third party, a realtor came and explained to him, this is what your house is worth. This is what, what probably your house is beautiful. Then the landlord realized, yes, my house is now worth. That is almost the same thing. We fail in realizing how beautiful we are. You fail in, uh, in understanding how worth and valuable you are. Most of the time we fail in realizing and recognizing and we need the help and the support of a third party and outsider to come and tell you and me how beautiful you are or how talented you are or how gifted you are or how valuable you are. My friends, be content with what we have. Though we are living in a world with a full of needs, God is telling us he will never leave us in the world of uh, needs that we have. Let me come to one more point and then I'll be done. Uh, uh, I think I'm almost coming to the end of the time that he has uh, given to me from your pastor. Uh, I have like a 40, 45 minutes or 50 minutes, the maximum. That's what he gave us, asked me, and I wanted to uh, conclude it before um, then. Now, the third thing that I wanted to tell you is God will never leave us when we decide to live for him. God will never leave us when we have decided to live for him. When he have decided to serve him. When we have decided to serve him. When we have decided to live for him. God is giving us the promise that he will never leave us. That's a great commission, uh, the great command that we can see from Lord Jesus Christ. He gave the last commandment, the great commission to his disciples in Gospel of Matthew chapter 28 to 19 and 20 verses. Those verses says that you go and to make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey whatever I have commanded you. And the last verse says, hold, I am with you. I am with you until the end of the world. If you have decided to live for my God, if you have decided to serve your God with whatever the time, with whatever the ability, with whatever the gift that you have, not necessarily you be a pastor, not necessarily you be a family member in a pastor's house, you be at your workplace, you be at your profession, you be at your house, and you be in your city, you be in your town, and uh, still you can serve God. Bible says, when you have decided to serve God, when you want to diligently seek him, when you diligently want to serve him and live for him, God will never leave you. There he says, he will be with us till the end. Matthew chapter 28. He will be with us till the end. He will provide us the need that we need to live for him and that we need to serve him. He said he will sustain us always, that is, until 
the end of the world. So the Bible says, though we are forsaken by the things of this world, though we are forsaken by everybody in this world, people around us, people around us, the friends, or every, everyone may forsake us, but the Bible says he will never forsake us and he will never leave us as long we have decided to live for him, as long we have decided to serve him. My friends, let me, let me come to the, to the last few minutes of my sermon and tell you, we have a God. He has promised he will never leave us. I do not know what the difficulty that you have probably to live for him. I do not know probably what the issue that we, you have maybe to serve him with whatever the capacity that you, he, that he, that you can. Uh, I do not know probably what the difficulty you have to serve him or live for him, whatever the gift that he has bestowed you with. I do not know what the difficulty probably you may have to, uh, to serve him or to live for him, uh, diligently seek him uh, with um, uh, whatever the, the quality of life, whatever the value of life that he has given us. My friends, we need to really thank God for the precious life that God has given us. We need to thank God for the good health that he has given us. We need to thank God for all the blessings that he has given us. With all the blessings that we have, amen, even today, we have to diligently seek the blessings of God. We have to diligently seek the blessings of God. You all probably must have heard about a small girl. Her name is Fanny Crosby. She was blind. She was born blind. And um, uh, though she was blind, she knew that God will be with her in every step of her life. And she has experienced God in every walks of her life, in every uh, step of her life. When others, even in the family, family members, and all the friends, whenever they saw her, this blind girl, uh, they all have showed some kind of sympathy. What this world can do uh, when a person is blind? Nothing much this world can do and they all can feel sympathy. That's how even, even our friends or uh, even sometimes the family members treat us. When we got nothing, probably what they can do is they can feel sympathy. Uh, they can say different words, probably of no value or of, 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 of no good. Uh, 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 so that probably the way that people can uh, uh, treat us. But um, uh, this small girl, uh, she decided to serve God with the difficulty that she has, with the blindness, with the with the uh, uh, the, the handicapped situation, uh, with the with the blindness, with the uh, uh, issue, she decided that she wanted to serve God. Now, her friends and family came and showed her all the sympathy, which was not at all working for her. But when she decided to serve God with her difficulty, God started blessing her. God started blessing her. And when God started blessing her, she started diligently serving the Lord more powerful than before. And when she experienced the blessings and the provision of God in her life, even in the midst of her changing and difficult situation, God has blessed her. And God has used her to compose a beautiful chorus, a beautiful song that we sing every now and then. And that song says, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. We all know that song, right? Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. That was composed and written by a girl called Fanny Crosby, a blind girl. Never think about what the issue you have. Never think about what the difficulty that you have. It's all the attitude, it's all the mind, it's all the preparation that we can have. As I close, let me tell you, God's word says, I will never leave you. No matter what the situation is, no matter with what you are surrounded by, no matter who is probably attacking you, no matter what the failures are, 
No matter what the situation is, no matter what the sickness is, no matter what the physical condition that you are going through, no matter how tragic and how difficult, how tragic the virus is, no matter what damage it can bring to you and me, no matter what the financial status that you are going through, no matter what the finance or the family a background that you are going through the difficulties, God is telling you and me, I will never leave you. I will never leave you. What a great promise. What a great promise we have. The Bible says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I want to end my sermon with this verse. Verse 6. We did not think about that much. Verse 6 eight says that. So that we can boldly say. When we experience the ever abiding presence of the almighty God. When we can experience the ever abiding presence of God in the midst of changing circumstances. When we can experience the ever abiding presence of God in the challenges of our daily needs. When we can experience the ever abiding presence of the Lord. When we diligently plan to seek him and serve him and live for him. He says that I will never leave you. Then we can boldly say. That's what it says, right? Your Bible also says the same thing as my Bible. We can boldly say. What we can say boldly. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. Look at your difficulty. Look at your situation. Look at the family troubles probably that you have. Look at uh, every situation surrounded. Look at all the wrong things or the failures happening around you. And can you say boldly, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear. Thank you so much, church. Thank you for the great time and the great privilege that I had uh, to spend with you uh, the last one hour almost. And uh, uh, got the privilege of sharing from God's word. And thank you, church, uh, for the opportunity that you have given me. And thank you, my good friend, uh, Pastor Sam Kuti Matthew, for the privilege uh, that you have given me. And uh, definitely, I'll continue to keep you and uh, the church, every one of you, in my prayers. And I request the same from you as well. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the time with you. Thank you so much for patiently uh, listening to me. Uh, God be with you all and have a blessed time. Have a